Welcome to Chalk Paint 101 Questions and Answers. My name is Christina and this is the Reclaimed Heirloom. This is just a series to help troubleshoot and get you answers for your furniture decor projects from chalk painting, restyling, coloring, and I get so many wonderful questions and I really feel it's always advantageous that we can share the questions so everybody can benefit. So let's get started. First off, I'm renovating, so excuse the background. Everything is gone and I am painting and it's just a big glorious mess in here, but that's okay, because I'm gonna share all the steps and process in which I do to restyle and revamp and DIY, both with this room, the kitchen, and spare washroom. So looking forward to sharing that with you. So I've got some fantastic questions. And the first question I have is, where do I get decoupage or decoupage images? All I've done and demonstrated within my videos in my playlist from my Saturday tutorials is I will print uh, image off of Google just based on certain colors, the style, been doing a lot of like that Renaissance era, etc. And all I do is take a snapshot off my phone and then I print it off my computer and it's just a regular jet print printer. The ideal thing to do is to pick the image you want and use a laser printer and you can actually get thinner paper and you can resource at your local stationery stores to be able to do this. So finding decoupage images really is just some soul searching based on from your end. And if you want to go on Amazon, you can actually find some really good funky um, wrapping paper. And there's such a huge selection. So if you're looking for a certain kind of color outlay and pattern, and it's a certain mood you're wanting to go with, uh, wrapping paper is probably one of the best sources outside of using printers. So that's another one, as well as napkins. Napkins can be found from dollar stores. Again, you can go on Amazon and you can get such a huge selection and all kinds of styles to suit the taste for the project that you're doing. So that's another really good source. And there is stationery and paper supply places that offer all kinds of prints and, you know, even right down to wallpaper. You could use wallpaper as well. So again, this is not, there's not one special place just for decoupages. It's really just kind of resourcing and finding ways of getting a decoupage and using decoupage image. Wallpaper, I definitely want to try. Someone had asked in um, a great question. So it's gonna take me to question two. Have you ever tried sanding the, once I've placed the decoupage on my piece of furniture or you know my DIY project, have you tried sanding it after you have applied it with the Mod Podge? And I have not, but I have heard and seen people do that just to mask out the edges and smooth them out. What I've demonstrated in my videos is I actually just use a lighter and I burn the edges and that just thins the paper all the way around. And again, because I go with kind of that old world look and that aged, I kind of outline it so that way that image and that decoupage goes into the piece of furniture. And I'm gonna leave a couple card links above if you haven't checked out any of those decoupage uh, projects from my Saturday tutorials. Going to question three. When I am waxing a piece at the end, so you're putting your, your wax seal on your furniture project after you've painted it. It takes it all the way back to the surface. And um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I've had this happen. And there's a few reasons that that has happened. But the fundamental and the physics of what's happened, why the wax You've done your project, you've painted, you want to wax to, to, to seal your project, but the wax is actually pulling and it's pulling the paint right back to the surface you started with. 
what has happened is your project wasn't completely dry. And this will depend on the climate, like the air climate you've painted in. Is it warm enough? Was it really thick? Was the surface that it needed to adhere to really slick, really like super smooth? So there's all these little in-betweens that can happen when we kind of, kind of punch through the, the project and by the end, because I will normally do a whole project in, in a full day. Sometimes it'll take me two days depending on other things going on. But if we're just painting a small project, we can generally paint it within a couple of hours, go ahead and wax it. So this is what's happened. The paint wasn't fully dry and the surface that you've painted is a little too slick. So when you take little components of all of this, this is why that wax has pulled it back. So not to worry, it's not what you're doing. It's just going back to the steps originally and giving it a little bit more time. So number one, whatever color you've painted, whatever you've done, just go back, correct that area. Just let it sit overnight. One of the best things you can do, and I know a lot of YouTube tutorials, they're sped up and it kind of just, when you're watching a few of them and you've binged on them, it looks so easy and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have that done in a couple, like an hour. No, this is usually hours of footage that's been shrunk down and it looks like it got done in just a blink of an eye, but it didn't. So there are steps and sometimes footage is taken over a few days. So it's really important to make sure that when you're doing layers, when you've applied a base, gone forward with those layers, you're ready to seal your project. Make sure that all that underneath is completely dry. And just remember in the back of your mind, if you have painted over a very slick surface, so it's just really smooth, there wasn't any real sanding, other than a good cleaning, there wasn't any priming, think that the paint itself needs to be cured a little bit longer. So that's what's happened. It just wasn't fully cured. So when you put the wax on, it just pulled back. And again, I've had it happen to me. So it's a really good question. So I'm really happy that I can share this on, on Chalk Paint 101 because I'm sure a few of us who have painted a few pieces or some of those who are pretty experienced out there have had this happen. Question four. How much paint do I need? I get this question a lot. And trying to go back when I first started playing around with furniture, recycling furniture, and then getting into chalk painting furniture, I really had no clue how much paint I was going to need. And I certainly didn't have a plan of being where I'm at now. It just kind of, it just evolved that way. And I'm glad it did, but it, it wasn't planned that way. If you're starting out and you've seen, whether it was my tutorial or somebody else who has a really great tutorial out here on YouTube, and you're indecisive because there's a whole bunch of colors, pick the foundation color and you're gonna probably need a little bit more. So the medium to larger size, you know, container in which the chalk paint product you're buying. If you know you're gonna play with some colors, always buy the little samples. You can buy one, two, three, depending how, or how many colors you wanna to add to your project. I've had a few along the way since I started my channel, people telling me, you know, well, this just seems like it's gonna get really costly. You know, you're showing all these cans of uh, Annie Sloan chalk paint and you've got like four, five, six of them. By the time I total all of this, my project's gonna cost me like two, $300. And no, that's not the case at all. I'm showing you because I'm painting volume and I'm just showing you the can that I have. But most paint companies, whether it's uh, mineral um, paints, whether it's all-in-one paints, any type of furniture styling paint will generally, 99% of the time, carry sample sizes. So you, you have a budget um, area that you can go into. But if you're going to paint you know, a fairly large dresser or a big cabinet and that's what you wanna paint. The foundation color in which you're gonna use, that's gonna be the largest one you're gonna buy. And then you have other colors that you can 
you know, rag it with, you can do paint washes with, you could add detail stencils with, so you can play with the colors, but you don't need to buy all of that. Think the larger, the bigger, the medium, you can get the, the medium size and the smaller the project, you can go with the little sample sizes. So it's a pretty valid question, especially when you're new and you have a few pieces and you really wanna kind of play around and see what's going on. You wanna keep it within range. And there are some fantastic options for different types of chalk paint products. So there's some really great budget-friendly ones. There's um, Art Deco. There's Waverly, they're relatively inexpensive. They're found at a lot of major um, storefronts like Walmart, things like that, which is across North America. And then you can go to Stockist, you can just type in the product name and it'll locate you to the local Stockist. You can order from them. A lot of them are doing online now because of COVID. So if you don't wanna drive around or it's too far for you, you know, they do delivery, so that's also another option too, and I'm babbling, so I'm going back to the question is, never think that you need a lot of paint. And I think a lot of where I went wrong when I first started chalk painting is I actually use way too much paint. And what happens is, is when there's too much paint and you're trying to play around and get decorative with the paint, it's not gonna do what you want it to do because there's too much of it. So always think less is best especially after you've put a good, strong foundation. Once that first coat or second coat, your base coat is completely 100% dry, fully cured to your piece, now you wanna get into some more decorative finishes. You only need little bits, little bits of paint. So anyway, I hope that really helps. Number five. My paint is separating right when I start to apply it. It's, it's pulling right when I apply it to the surface. So when that happens, it's 99% of the time, it's because the varnish is just too sheen and it's that oil and water don't mix. So it's not grabbing. So generally chalk paint, when it's stirred really well and goes on, it can cover over that, but sometimes it happens when you put it on, even after a good cleaning, it's just that varnish, that protective layer that's already on the piece of furniture is what's causing that problem. So if you are in that situation, you're applying your chalk paint and it just doesn't seem to be grabbing, it's not adhering to the surface very well, this is where, you know, unfortunately, you're gonna have to grab some sandpaper and or a primer first because you're gonna end up using a lot of chalk paint to try to overcome it. So you're gonna be globbing it on. You're not gonna be able to get any kind of smooth surface if that's the, like, the optimum goal of what you're hoping to achieve. Regardless of the finish that you're doing, you're gonna to have to use a lot of chalk paint, which is generally you know, a little bit more expensive than say if you just go and put some primer down first. It's just kind of managing out the budget as well as your time a little bit too. Just remember, when something looks shiny, chances are you're gonna run into paint adhering difficulties. And sometimes if it's, again, going back to our first question, if it's not fully cured to the piece, that's when, when you apply your wax, everything starts to pull back a little bit. So, and again, I have had this happen to me. So it's really cool to, to jam and, and to talk about this because it, it does happen. Whether it's your first project or your fifth project or your hundredth project, these things happen. Again, chalk paint is designed that it's supposed to be easy, it's supposed to be fun, but it's, it's not God. <laughs> You're still, like there's so many surfaces out there, there's so many different varnishes out there, there's so many different pieces of furniture from all different decades out there that these little fractions of problems do arise how do we troubleshoot it? So again, remember that when a surface is super slick, like a lot of people have this with their kitchen cabinets, when it's completely sealed and it's varnished and it's really like slick and slippery, chances are it's probably better to put a, a primer down first and or just give it a sand. So depending on what you prefer to do. Some people don't like sanding indoors. Um, some people don't like primer. They don't like the smell of primers. Again, I hope that really helps. 
These are just troubleshoots. So if you're seeing that super shiny, you're either gonna grab your sandpaper, or you're gonna grab your primer, or you're gonna use a lot more of your expensive chalk paint. So it's, it's up to you what you wanna do depending on your situation and where you're doing it. Again, guys, I can't thank you enough. It's just been so much fun. And your comments, your questions, it's fantastic. It's, it just means the world to me. And I'm super excited because right now I have emptied out my house. Everything is sold. Even this bed behind me, she's picking this up tomorrow. <laughs> so everything's gone in my house. Everything is like moving into it all over again. I'm taking the white down. I've got this project for this room going. I've got my studio going and I've got that spare bathroom and I'm filming everything. So I've got a few videos in progress right now. And of course I have my Saturday tutorial. So I'm looking forward to sharing this Saturday's tutorial because I had a huge beauty in here and she's getting a full makeover. And I'm so excited to share this with you. Again, if you found this beneficial and this is helpful, please leave me a comment in the comment box below with your questions based on your styles, your colors, anything that you need for troubleshooting your chalk paint projects. I love sharing questions and answers with you guys. It just, it's great. And the more we can share as a community, it really helps for all of us to be successful with our chalk paint projects. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this as well as hit that subscribe button because I am looking forward to seeing you on Saturday for my hands-on tutorials. So it's fun to restyle and it's fun to do it yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Wednesday for Chalk Paint 101 Session 9. Thanks. Thank you.